Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another, another Neverwinter video. Uh, and today we're going to do another lockbox guide. Uh, the first one I did on the Glorious Resurgence lockbox uh, went over pretty well. I did get a lot of feedback and people would like to see more of that type of video. So I'm going to make a series out of it and we will go over lockboxes. Uh, today's lockbox of choice is going to be the Fire Main, uh, which just got done dropping on the Xbox. Uh, and is now currently dropping on the PS4. Uh, keep in mind, you know, lockboxes always do make rotations, but that's just the current drops right now, as of today. Uh, that will always change. But nevertheless, this will be an overall guide of the Fire Main lockbox. Let's uh, jump right into it. So, let's inspect the box here, and of course the top end rewards is going to be the Swift Golden Lion mount, and you also get a Golden Lion Insignia pack. Let's take a look at the Lion. Uh, it is one of the better legendary mounts in the game for certain classes. Uh, clerics, uh, tanks, uh, especially paladins, uh, everything to do with the radiant weapon damage, everything that I've heard. I don't play those classes, uh, but my friends love this mount. Um, they said it procs just so much and the HP gain and the shield and everything, everything from this legendary mount is great. Uh, so it does, it does get pretty expensive. You're going to pay, you know, 10, 15, 20 million for this mount easily. Uh, and like I said, it is a legendary mount. The drop rate on it is horrible. If you do get lucky and pull one, congratulations. Uh, also going with that, you also get the Golden Line Insignia Pack, which isn't a big deal. Uh, basically, these are all insignias for your mount bonuses. Uh, these are actually, actually newer insignias, not the first round that we got, but this is the second round. These ones actually do have different statistics on these uh, than the previous ones we did get, which opens up more possibilities for uh, additional bonus stats in your uh, stable and on your mounts. Uh, I view the mounts as a complete bonus system. All those stats are basically bonus stats. Uh, now some of these are good. You know, the regals are good. The barbed is good. Uh, so if you can actually get this pack, you know, you may want to think about opening it or you may want to think about just selling the pack. Uh, I don't think very many people just sell the pack. I think they take the uh, chance on it, open it, try to get a good one, and either use it or do sell it. Uh, they they will sell pretty high, anywhere from uh, 200, 400k uh, for the Regal. Uh, the Barb might be a little higher. Um, and as you can see, these are all purple. That's the highest tier of insignias that we have right now. Uh, until they decide to come out with legendary ones. Moving along here, we do have the companion as well, uh, which is also a good pull. Uh, if we take a look at him, he is a pretty decent companion for, like I said, tank tank classes and possibly clerics. Uh, Paladins do take advantage of this. It also has radiant weapon effects. Uh, not too much to say about the companion. Um, it does sell decently still, anywhere from 300, 400 to 500k. So if you are lucky enough to pull the Epic Companion, then you will be sitting pretty whether you need it or you got to sell it. Uh, moving right along here, we have the Fire Main Insignia Pack, which is basically just more uh, insignias. You're guaranteed one purple one and two blue one. Uh, it will be up to you. If you do want to sell the pack as a whole, or if you want to open it up and sell individually, depending on what the market is. Uh, so you will get one guaranteed uh, epic one, and then you also get two rare ones. And like I said, these are the newer tiered ones. They are different than the previous insignias. Uh, so the Fire Main Pack does actually have two insignia packs. You can actually get... Uh, one with the legendary pool, or you can get one by itself as an epic pool. <clears throat> Moving right along, we have the uh, Wanderer's Artifact Weapon Pack. Uh, nothing special here. Uh, you do have a chance to uh, snag the Elemental uh, Artifact Weapon Choice Pack. Uh, and what that is, is basically it's all the... 
elemental weapons and you get to pick which element you want so if you want the earth set the fire set the air set you know or the water set uh you have a chance to pick it now i'm not a big fan of the elemental weapons uh personally uh they're you know if you need the burning set for pvp uh this is one way to get it rather than trying to farm or accumulate 100 moats uh the elemental uh weapon pack does sell pretty high but it does fluctuate pretty pretty heavily i've seen it go for 500k and i've seen it go for over a million uh as we progress through the game uh these weapons do become obsolete uh, i always say in my guides that the twisted weapon is pretty much best in slot um and like i said the artifact uh the elemental artifacts are very choice selective like I said, it's mainly used for PvP these days, and that's only one in particular set. And just a little uh, tip, um, I wouldn't waste money buying an elemental artifact set. First of all, you should most likely get your twisted set, as it is pretty much best in slot for every class. Uh, however, I do want to mention that coming in uh, the mid-module update, mod uh, 10.5, um, we are getting a new artifact set. So this one will become even more obsolete. The twisted set may longer no be, you know, uh, best in slot anymore. The new artifact weapon set is mostly going to be best in slot. Uh, and also, they're including uh, in professions, you're actually going to be able to craft... Uh, the elemental artifact weapon sets so there will be no reason to uh, farm moats anymore if you uh, maybe you're just a collection junkie and you want to collect everything in the game uh, I mean all power to you um, but you will be able to craft them so if you have level 25 in specific professions you will actually be able just to craft the elemental weapon set and they're, they're actually going to be uh, bind on equip I believe uh, unless something changes, so you can always just buy whatever set you want right out of the marketplace. Uh, also coming with this pack, of course, is the uh, Greater Marks uh, Power, Stability, and Union, uh, your Cube of Augmentation. And then you have a chance to get some Resident Stones as well. Uh, the Nobians Artifact Pack is basically going to be your Greater Mark of Potencies, uh, your Refining Stones, and then you also have a chance to get the uh, Black Ice Beholder, uh, the Lantern, uh, the Imperial Restraint Rod, uh, and then also the Waistband of Armor, uh, Black Ice Belt, and Cloak. Uh, these are all already in the game, um, obviously. The only decent pull out of here is actually pulling the Lantern. Um, this is one of the only places that you can get the Lantern unless you attempt to farm it out of low tier dungeons. Uh, so the lantern is a pretty big deal if, for instance, when you made your character the first time around and you took something else other than the lantern for whatever reason, uh, you can now uh, either get one from this box or buy one out of the auction house. Uh, the lantern, you know, is a pretty decent overall artifact for most DPS classes. Uh, and then, of course, you can also snag some preservation wards. Um... And then this is also where your uh, top end refinement comes from. Uh, the Brilliant Diamond, the Blood Ruby, the Black Opal. So, overall good box. Moving on, we have the Demonic Enchantment Cache. Uh, this is also going to be your uh, Superior Market Potency and Greater Market Potency box. And then also you have a chance to get a Brilliant Diamond. Uh, this is important box, especially for the PS4 community, as this is the first time you are going to be introduced to the Dread Enchantment. Uh, that's a pretty big deal, as uh, a lot of DPS classes do utilize the Dread Enchantment. So you have a chance to either get the Shadow Cloud Enchantment or the Dread Enchantment, and then of course more Refinement, and also Demonic Enchantment Rank 7, or Rank 8 Enchantments. Moving right along, we have the Fire Main Companion Pack. Uh, this is the new pet box or companion box. Uh, you do have a chance to pull the 30 companion upgrade tokens, uh, your bonding rune stones, uh, rank 9 rune stones, or 3 rank 8 rune stones. Now, these are all 
you know, great. You know, the more rank eights and rank nines you accumulate, the faster you're going to get through your refinement process for your artifacts if you are still needing that. And then also you do have a chance to pull an epic uh, companion. These are all the starter companions that you would start out with normally with a new character in the game. However, this is the epic version of them. They're not horrible. They're by no means uh, best in slot active companions or, you know, just other companions that you may use. Uh, but they do come unbound, so if you do decide to make a new character and toss the epic apprentice healer on it, you know, you're going to be sitting pretty. Uh, as far as leveling up goes, uh, they don't sell for too much, uh, not on Xbox at least, but hey, uh, money's money, guys. Anything you can do, get money. Uh, so you're also going to either get, um, well, you're guaranteed to get uh, an experience tomb for your companion, and then you're going to get two companion tokens every time you open one of these. If you hit the jackpot and get the 30 companion upgrade tokens, then that's fantastic, but you're always guaranteed to. Moving right along, we have the Artisan, Artisan's uh, Profession Pack. Uh, this is going to be the Profession Pack for this lockbox. Uh, there's nothing really different in here other than the fact that you do now have a chance to pull a Legendary Tool. Now, these Legendary Tools are extremely rare. Uh, we had the Fireball, Fireman lockbox for a few months on Xbox, and I believe only maybe three... Uh, three or four legendary tools have actually been pulled, and they are very expensive. We're talking anywhere from 30 million probably to 70 to 80 million uh, each for a tool, depending on what tool you pull. If you pull the correct tool, uh, then yeah, you're gonna you're basically gonna be rich at that point. Uh, but yeah, it does actually have a really really ro low drop rate, probably lower drop rate than actually hitting the jackpot and getting the legendary pool from the lockbox itself. Uh, of course, you're also going to get some uh, bag of crystals, jewels, or gems, which are used for power leveling your professions. I've done a video on this. Uh, it's in the guide section on my channel if you want to go back and take a look at that if you haven't seen it. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's just all your normal profession pack stuff. And then... Finally, we have the Regal Stronghold pack, and basically this is just uh, vouchers for your guild, so for your stronghold. If your guild still needs uh, certain items, uh, this pack will contain two or three of uh, some of these major epic vouchers. Uh, now, what I want to do is mention is that you can sell the Regal Stronghold, stronghold pack by itself. Uh, it usually goes from like... 15k to 20k or you can open it up and hopefully pull a decent uh, voucher if you get two or three vouchers you will actually uh, profit more by selling the vouchers by themselves you can sell the vouchers by themselves rather than selling the uh, pack uh, alone so say you pull uh, the influence or the fray trinket, any of the campaign currency ones are going to be high. Uh, the labor voucher is probably going to be the lowest, uh, and the surplus equipment is probably going to be the second lowest, and the astro diamonds is going to be the third lowest. Those don't sell for nearly as much as the actual campaign currency ones or the influence one. So if you pull three dark gifts or three frozen treasures, that's probably going to be uh, a 50k profit rather than just selling the stronghold pack by itself for like 15 to 20k uh, you can actually make good money if you're a gambling man you can actually buy a bunch of stronghold packs open them all and sell the vouchers individually and probably make a profit uh, but like I said don't quote me on that uh, the market does change constantly uh, but that was a good good way of making some minor AD profit when this was released at least and then finally, we do have <coughs> the Tarmaloon Trade Bar Jackpot, which if you do pull this, you can win up to 100 additional trade bars. But that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. That's going to be the overview and the guide for the Fireman Lockbox. My own personal opinion is this is one of the better lockboxes. Uh, I still like the Glorious Resurgence. However, this one does have updated items. Uh, you will profit more, most likely, from the fire main lockbox. Uh, so I do like it. Um, really not much else to say. Uh, that's going to wrap up the video. 
and we will see you guys later.